Hey everybody, Rock Paper Mario here, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Shield. And in the last part, we kicked off Peony's next adventure, um, which was to capture the legendary birds who cannot be there. Oh, the old ones can't come to the phone right now. Um, and in this part, we're going to continue that by capturing, hopefully, Galarian Zapdos, who, as you can see, this is going to be a hoosh, right? We pretty much just got to, like, hunt it down. I'm actually going to turn off the, the internet. Because the, the, the lagging that it's causing is only being annoying. So I think we've actually just got to head it off at the pass is what we need to do, because it has, like, a path that it runs around here on. And I feel like we need to then, like, m maybe I'm wrong. I feel like that's how I caught it the last time, was that when it turned around, I just, like, walked into it. And then that was the end of that story. But again, I feel like I'm faster now that the internet is off. I feel like the internet lag was being, was really not helping. You know what, Tyrogue? You pissed me off at the start of this LP. You're pissing me off now. I've been good to you. Now, I'm coming to the edge. You're lucky I didn't, like, acrobat your ass. Yeah, look, see? Like, do you see the difference between having the internet off and on? This thing is scary, by the way. It's like a big, terrifying ostrich. Or cassowary, or whatever. I'll never forget I had this, like... I had this video called, um... I had this video called... Like, actually I had, like, I think about two or three of them or something like that. I had these videos called Deadly Australians, which were about, like, the different wildlife in... In, um... Which were about, like, the different wildlife in Australia. I'm gonna use acrobatics on this thing. Whoa, okay. Nice one, Roxette. Roxette, are you actually going to, like, single-handedly defeat this thing? Like, imagine you have, like, this cute little flying squirrel facing off against this beast. But yeah, I had, like, these videos um, called Deadly Australians, which were, like, these wildlife documentaries about, um, like, about, like, dangerous Australian animals, of which there are many, you know? Um... Okay, so, uh... Wow, Roxette, you're doing well. I shouldn't be underestimating you. The, um... And, uh... They were actually quite good. Like, they were good wildlife documentaries. And then, like, interspersed with, like, the... Like, they, there, there was, like... Obviously, they talked about the, the wildlife itself. But then they also talked about the, um... They also had, like, like real-life stories of um, people who had had an account encounter with these, with these animals. Like, you had the person who had a funnel-web spider in his shoe or something like that, you know? And, like, one of the animals that they talked about, which I was fascinated by, was the cassowary, which, if you don't know what a cassowary is, it's pretty much just, like, a terrifying, flightless bird that, um... A terrifying flightless bird that lives in Australia, which, like, looks cool. It's like this black kind of shaggy bird with, like, a, with, like, a blue and red neck and, like, a kind of a weird head. It's, like, it's, it's really, like, kind of, like, almost primitive looking or something like that. There's something, like, very dinosauric about it. But apparently they're aggressive and they kick you. Like, apparently they're aggressive and they'll just, like, run out, chase you down and kick you to death or whatever. So, yeah, like, I remember being totally fascinated by this. And I guess that's what Zap- that's what Galarian Zapdos is. is a terrifying cassowary that'll kick your head off. I presume. It's like the Jean-Claude Van Damme of Pokémon. Just to talk about that again. Maybe Zapdos's nipples are all hard and it'll be rescued in the Rockies, where the strange things happen, by big sweaty bears. That's the way he says it as well, he says it so casually. He's like, I was rescued by big sweaty bears. I'm like, what? 
that, that's not something you just like drop like that, you know, I was rescued by big sweaty bears. Happens all the time, you know. It's like, alright Zapdos. This is your chance to become, this is your chance to make Moltres look like an asshole, you know. Not that he needs any help. But this is, like, I'll, I'll just put it to you straight, this is your chance to be nice, get in the frickin' Pokeball, and make Moltres look like the real asshole here. Yeah, yeah, you're listening, you're listening. I'm getting true to him. I got true to them. It's like, Harry 1, Moltres 0. Well, that went decidedly better. That was a way easier than, than Moltres. Zapdos' data. Strong legs, Pokemon. One kick from its powerful legs will pulverize a dump truck. Like, imagine. Runs through the mountains. Yeah, that's obviously Jean-Claude Van Damme. Or I'll just call him Jean-Claude. What else are we going to call it? I feel- okay, so I feel like I need to fix something here with my Switch. I didn't, like, mention this because it's just, like, vaguely dawning on me now. That, um... So, what what I did, like, during the week was I- well, I picked up my- my remaining consoles from my parents' house. So my Wii, my Nintendo 64, my PlayStation 2, and my Dreamcast. And, um, yeah, I know. Jesus. The, um... My Wii U and my Dreamcast, my N64, my PS2, um, and the... Um, so I set up the Wii. So, th for those of you who don't know, I have like the Nintendo Switch behind the TV. So the actual console is behind the TV, which doesn't usually cause any issues. But now, the Wii is between the Nintendo Switch and the TV. So I have the Nintendo Switch, no, I have the TV, then behind it is the, is the Wii. Um, standing up, but like laterally, and then behind the Wii is the Nintendo Switch dock. And I'm feeling that's kind of like a bad idea now, is what I'm realizing, because um, I'm feeling like that sometimes the buttons aren't responding, like the A button and things like that, and I think it's because like the signal is having to travel through both the television and the Wii in order to be able to get to the Nintendo Switch console. By the way, I have, like, no idea how you're supposed to find Galarian Articuno. I feel like I just heard it there. Like, for me, whenever I saw it or found it, it was just random. Like, it was completely random how I actually located it. Which I don't like. I oh, there it is. Yeah, look, there. that's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm talking to you. Hello? It's like not listening to me. Hello? It's like I can't be this lucky and then, um, maybe I just have to follow it. Is that what I have to do? Follow its shadow? Okay, so... Okay, so I'm actually going to be a bit of an asshole here, and I'm going to save the game, so that I, I make sure that I get the right one. Well, no, I kind of didn't have to do that, did I? Because I'll just, like, follow it again. It's actually good that we're somewhere where it's not hail, though, because that's usually the problem here, is that when... What I was going to do was just, like, restart the game, by the way. <laughs> I was going to, like, restart the game to, um... And I can still do that, I suppose. Snorlax, don't get in my way. For you! You stupid-looking thing. Do you know what I'm doing it? Yeah, I was playing Metopia. <laughs> the um I, I'm not going like chasing this thing all over the crown tundra when I don't even know what I'm doing it'd be one thing if I at least knew what I was doing here but I really don't 
And if you're telling me that you never did this, then sorry, but you're a dirty scoundrel is what you are. So it was this one, wasn't it? No, now it was the other one that I picked last time, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I've been playing Metopia. I got it. To be honest, it wasn't on my radar. Like, I'd seen the trailers and I was like, yeah, whatever, you know. And then, and I never got the demo, which I feel like a lot of people got the demo and it was all over the internet. Um, that the... Um, it was all over the internet about how amazing the me creator was or whatever. Um... It was all over the internet how, like, amazing the... Was that actually it? No! Obama Snow! No! Not now! You just had to... You just couldn't let me have this! You just needed your 15 minutes of fame! You stand there looking like... Like the radish spirit. It's like, there, happy now? Are you gonna let me battle you now? What the- Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was like triggered there for a second. I was like, is it just going to disappear? <laughs> is it just going to disappear and go away? Um, but yeah, now I have, um... Now I have Metopia and I just decided on a whim to, to get it and play it. Is this just gonna outright kill us now, by the way? Please don't. Oh, thank you. But I'm frozen! No! Frozen solid. Should I not just try and, like, quick ball it? I feel like that's, like, the next best thing, is to try and quick ball. Then bring some other Pokemon in when Roxette dies. And then get another chance to... And then get another... Oh, yeah, that's it! I forgot it has that ability. It has that ability, Psycho Shift, where it copies its... It copies its status ailment onto you, but to be honest, that doesn't bother me that much. I'll use the full restore. I need an ice cream cone. I need an apple pie. I need a, uh, a family with type 2 adult onset diabetes. But now you're gonna confuse me, right? Yeah. Well, uh, there we go. Um, the. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, oh, I was talking about Metopia. The, um, so now I actually decide to get it on a whim. Um, and I, um, I decided to get it on a whim, and that game is so weird. Like, there's something about, like, so, so this is, like, my stance on Metopia, right? It's not actually a great game, so this is the start, right? Let me preface this by saying, as a game, Metopia isn't actually that great. Like, like the, the actual game of it is kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know? And it's very repetitive, it, it, like, like extremely repetitive. It doesn't give you a lot of agency or freedom, or so, so all of this sounds bad, right? All of this sounds like actually Metopia is a bad game, but like so so, but the some actually in one way, the simplicity of it is kind of like enjoyable if you know what I mean. It's like I think I can use this actually, and it'll be good. Let's do 110. Yeah, there we go. Roxette, you are like the bomb today. Like, sorry, but like th these, these, like Roxette is my legendary killer. Would you ever think that an Imalga would be getting this level of glory as being the legendary killer? Like, look at that. Like, even more so. Okay, don't kill it, Roxette. Well, kill it, but not in the not in the literal sense. You know, in the figurative sense, you can kill it all you want. Um, but yeah, Metopia. I'm kind of like... It's kind of like... Like the, the actual, um... 
the actual like gameplay of it is poor, but there's something about the simplicity of it where you can't stop playing it. You know, it's like you can just sit there and like play it and play it and it's actually like like the simplicity of it is somewhat enjoyable. Um and then there's also just the kind of zaniness of it. Like it's extremely zany, extremely wacky, right? And that alone makes it enjoyable to play. That combined with the the characterization. So I'll I'll tell you I'll I'll tell you now. My party is me, Whoopi Goldberg, Judge Judy and Gordon Ramsay, like, that is my party, right? So so we get up to all these hijinks, like, Whoopi Goldberg and Judge Judy go fishing. Gordon Ramsay and I go to the cinema. Whoopi Goldberg and, and Judge and, and I go to the beach, or something like that. Like, there's all this random stuff that happens, like, all these random little conversations that we have during the game, and it's like, if you actually imagine then that in real life, what if Judge Judy and Gordon Ramsay did go to a coffee shop and Judge Gordon... Gordon Ramsay forgot his wallet and so did Judge Judy and they both laughed about it like that's the crazy part so that's one element of it of, that's just completely wacky and off the wall and that makes it fun to play like that alone makes it hilariously fun to play um but then and sorry Roxette you did a great job you put in the good college try um the other element of this is that, and Robocop is actually going to be good here, I guess. The other element of it is that, like, the storyline characters, you can also have, like, crazy characters that you make. Like, for example, the king in my game is Fraser Crane. So I have King Fraser, Princess Enya, and then, like, her heart is being vied for by Prince Dio from a foreign land, and like this and Joseph Joestar like the old one with the beard so like and then I have like Norman Osborn is the mayor of the town one of the guards in the king's place is Draco Malfoy it's like it's just strange and this is Beyonce by the way didn't wait no I had like a needle queen called Beyonce already um I was like going it's like Beyonce because it's like be, because it's like once but um I think actually what it is is it's like the old, uh, the old Taylor Swift, the old Taylor. Cause Arjakuno is I think the scariest one. Will this even fit in? Okay, like this lack of responsiveness is really starting to get on my nerves. No, it doesn't. But I can call it like old Taylor. The old Taylor Swift can't come to the phone right now. Look what you made me do. Send it to the box. Take it to the fridge. That was way more like efficient than than the other ones. So now I go back to to, to peony. That was like way more efficient than the than the other ones turned out being than the Reggie ones turned out being. Um, well, I suppose we had less exploration to do as well. So Peony, now I have to report on all three of them separately. Legendary Pokemon that can manipulate ice. Yeah, but now it's can now it's actually a psychic type thing. Yeah, with an ultra mega mega icy gaze. Um, the uh, yeah, I caught it. It was actually the easiest one, I think. The um. Yeah, because it's Jean-Claude Van Damme with hard nipples and sweaty bears. The... So yeah, like, Metopia. I, I can't say that I recommend getting it, you know? Like, it's, it's one of those ones where I can't say, like, it's a great game, you have to play it, you know? But there's something fun about it. Like, that's, that's like, the weird thing about it. It's, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a, a poor game. In that there's very little of value in the actual gameplay, but in terms of it just being fun and hilarious and funny, there's a lot of value in that. In in that it's it's just like fun to play for some reason. Like it's very strange. Like I, I like you know when they call a game polarizing or anything polarizing, it usually means okay there'll be like 
you'll either be column A or column B, you'll either love it or hate it, you know, some people love it, some people hate it, the critical reception was divided. But for me, for me, this game is polarizing to me personally because one half of me is like, this is kind of a bad game. And one half of me, or at least mediocre, and one half of me is like, oh, it's fun, I can't stop playing it, you know? So I don't know how it makes me feel, to be honest. Yeah, we're finished the legendary bird. We're finished all your legendary quests. No more quantity time for you, Bob Pataki. Looks like that was the last bit of Grand Pian Adventure Tour that I had for you. Now this is an occasion, ultra mega epic. Your passion for all this caught me off guard, Chief. This whole adventure thing was built out of a load of rubbish I scraped together. Yeah, he didn't even know that it was true. It was just like, oh yeah, I read this somewhere. Read it online. But you, you went at it with a ton of energy. You don't suppose those Pokemon you caught were really the ones in the legends, do you, Miriam? Yeah, I do. Never mind, you don't have to tell me anything. Look in your face tells me everything I need to know. That's my boy. Whatever you discovered on your way, that's a special treasure just for you. Well, Chief Harry, thanks for sticking around and finishing every part of my adventure. I want you to have this. So we got his rare league card. That's the reward. A friendly handshake. I'm never gonna get an award. Yeah, you are forgetting something. Oh, uh, dab. People can hear you all the way outside, you know. My darling Helga. Yeah, it's lumpy space Helga. This place isn't bad, so this is where you're staying. Oh, hey, Harry. Fancy meeting you outside the Max Lair for once. Yeah, it's been a while. Really on my wavelength, so actually kept my old man company. Cheers, I owe you one. I've had to fill my Dynamax adventures now, so I thought I might as well try one of those watch a column tours my old man was talking about. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's like, sorry, Mia, he found a new child. Oh, what? Why'd everyone suddenly go quiet? It's like, we, we're together now, you're just going to have to accept it. I'll come up with some new legends straight away. You'll have your adventure, Helga. A nice father-daughter quantity time. What? What? Wait a second. You'll come up with the legends? Also, that's way too close. I need some personal space here. Whatever. It's 2009. Right. First thing... Oh, no. That's, that's not Lumpy Space Princess anymore. That's him. Shiny Explorer's outfit. What? Is she actually going to wear it? Why do I have to wear this golden one when yours is normal? It's because you're my darling daughter, Helga. You can never have enough big gold suits. Remember that. <laughs> Aww. Aww, he's so, like, so dejected. So that's our reward. A gold uniform that someone else didn't want. No, come back, Helga! No need to be so rebellious. I know you really love me, don't ya? You're free to keep using our base camp, of course. Time for me to go spend some quantity time with my darling daughter. And so that's the end of Peony and Peonia, or Bob Pataki and Lumpy Space Helga's uh, advent quantity time adventure, or whatever. Is that really the end, though? The end, question mark? I don't think it is. So technically that's like one end of the Crown Tundra, but there's actually more that we can do. So there's a legendary clue, now that we've ma solved his three first mysteries or whatever. The sweet little mystery. Um, now that we've solved that, then... We, um, there's like a whole new one that we need to solve. And it's all to do with like Dynamax Adventure. Pretty much like we basically have to do Dynamax Adventure. So yeah, basically now that we finished the legendary trios, the birds and the Reggies, there's like a couple more things that I want to show off on the Crown Tundra. There's this legendary clue. I want to show off Spiritomb, like getting Spiritomb. I want to show off getting Reggie Gigas. And I want to show off the big tree. Like, in the middle of- and those are like the four things that I need to do. Then it's the Galarian Twinkle Cup, or whatever it's called. Um, and then we're out, so. 
What I'll say is thank you very much for watching this part of Let's Play Pokemon Shield. In between videos I will switch around the Wii and the Switch so that the Wii's big body, Bez, isn't like in the way. Um, but yeah, until then, see you next time. Bye now.